Hey guys, we are gonna finish uh, page 14 and 15 for the homework based on the in-class activity. So uh, this is the data from period one. If you're a different period, your data is gonna be different, but this summary should be pretty much the same. Okay, so this is data from period one. I called it MEM because it's a memory game. And I entered in the 15 students that were in period one. There is their data. Okay, so now I'm gonna get the calculator to find the mean and standard deviation. You just go to menu, stat, stat calc, one variable stat. We have a list, yes. And I named my list mem. Enter, okay. So we're just gonna scroll up and get our data. It looks like X bar for period one was negative three and S sub X is 3.46. So negative three and S sub X is 3.46, okay? So can I make a dot plot? Sure, and so it looks like my highest number was positive four. So I got zero, negative three, negative six, negative four, negative six, negative two, positive four, negative five, negative four, negative one, negative three, oops, another negative three, so that dot's wrong, negative three, negative three, negative six, negative nine, positive three. Okay, so interesting. So it looks like on average, it's somewhere here at negative three, plus or minus three. Make sense? So in period one, only two had a better results from just scanning and most everyone else, one person had exactly the same data and everyone else did better with the story technique. Okay, so what does this data suggest? It suggests that most dots are negative, therefore most people did better with strategy B, okay? In this data. Now, what is the mean and um, what is the interpretation of that? Well, that just means on average, a typical student scored three words better with strategy B. Or said a different way, did three words worse with strategy A, and this is the data from, um, this is the data from period one. What was the data from period two? Or excuse me, period eight. This was their data. So basically the same, but they're going to have different a different dot plot here. So make sure you fill in your dot plot. Your mean uh, for the other class would be this. And uh, this class also had more variability because more people were awake or not awake or paying attention or not paying attention. I think it makes sense that maybe there was more variability in the afternoon. Um, yeah, so but on average in period eight, a typical student scored one word better with the strategy B, the story step strategy. On average in the morning, the students scored three words better. So both groups had the same conclusion. Uh, strategy B was better. One was considerably better. So um, now let's figure out, let's fill out 15 based on the data we have here. Okay, so what is my parameter? Well, 
My parameter is my mu difference. What is my difference? Um, because that is you. And what is that? That's your true difference in words remembered. True mean difference in words remembered. with strategy A versus B. And what did we do? We took A minus B, right? That was how we set that up. And what is our statistic? Well, that's our X bar difference, correct? And so period, period eight, got a difference of one word and period one, got a difference of three words. Okay, what's our confidence level? Well, they've asked us to do a 95% confidence level, okay? And so we're gonna do that. So how would the name be different? Well, it feels like we have two samples, but we still only have one sample because you're one human being. And we still are gonna do a T interval because we don't have sigma. We don't have sigma. And we're gonna do it for the mu difference, right? That makes sense. So we're gonna to have to check our conditions and there's a couple of things that, you know, pretty much the same, but slightly different. This was an experiment. So our random is yes, random assignment. Right, what does that mean? Um, each student had an equal chance of getting A or B first. So some students just randomly got A and some students randomly got B first. We assigned you that treatment randomly. Um, what else? N must be greater than or equal to 30. So if we combined all the numbers, we'd be fine. Or in this instance, I only have 15 in period one. So we're still okay. Um, since n is 15 and that's less than 30, we must review the data for outliers and strong skewness. Okay, well, lucky, luckily, it's right here. We did a dot plot and nothing looks strongly skewed and nothing looks outlierish. If you wanna, if that's not enough, you can go back to your home screen and actually graph it. No, that's not what I want. Actually make a picture of it. So pick the bar graph picture, right? And I called it memory. So if I call it mem again, Right, that doesn't look strongly skewed or uh, it doesn't look perfect, but, so how would I tell? If you go to menu and create a box plot, beautiful. No, no, um, this side is about the same as the other side. So that box plot doesn't look very skewed. And I also don't have any asterisks, so no outliers. So I'm gonna be fine here since in is less than 30, we must review uh, for outliers and strong skewness. We did, and it's good. Okay, so we are safe to proceed with normal conditions. What's my last test? My 10% condition. So my population is greater than 10 times my N. In period one, I had 15 students. So I think my population of students I could do this on is um, perfectly safe, right? I got 1,400 kids to go to the school. So the population's pretty big. All right, now for what work happens? Well, actually, most of this is exactly the same as, as chapter eight. We have our point estimate. So this is a good time to review, plus or minus our margin of error. So what is a specific formula? 
it's just going to be our x bar difference plus or minus our t star and we do times the standard deviation of the difference all over the square root of n okay so in period one we went all over the square root of 15 people what was our standard deviation in period one in period one it was this in period two it was the other one so you're going to copy a different number and what was the difference we had negative three does that make sense and we need the t star from the book so what would be the t star Let's look at our table B. Our degree of freedom would be not 15, but 14. So that's where my little tacky mark is, 14. And we're doing a 95%. So I'm gonna scoot over here and get 95% at a degree of freedom of 14, 2.145. 2.145, okay, that's my T star and that's it. So I'm pretty much done. What does the calculator do? Well, I can go back to my information, right? I still have my data in here, and I can actually do a confidence interval from here. So a confidence interval from here, and again, I'm just doing a one sample T interval. Whoop, no, not a Z interval. So let's pick a one sample T interval. And I have my data because I called it memory. It's a confidence level of 95. Yep. And it says, do you want to put your results in column E? So I'm like, yep, that's fine. Okay. So there it is. It scooted my results out here. Beautiful. I have a C lower and C upper. Remember, this is for period one. So we are... 95% confident if we're in period two that the interval from negative 4.9 to negative one captures the true mean difference In words remembered, when I take strategy A minus B. Okay. So what is my answer here? It says my X bar is negative three plus or minus my margin of error 1.92. Okay. And I got that right from the calculator. X bar and margin of error. All right, so last bit of conclusion. Do we have evidence that there is a difference? Yes, because here zero is not in my interval. We do have convincing evidence that strategy B is better, or that there is a difference between strategy A and B. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.